Welcome back to the channel, everyone, and thank you very much for joining. I'm Joel Freeman, and you're watching Wholehearted. If you haven't already, like and subscribe. And if you're looking for details on the giveaway, you can skip to the end of the video. However, I recommend that you stick around because today I'm going to be diving into the number one most common issue with a backhand throw. Whenever someone asks me for input or help on how to improve their form when throwing a backhand, it is almost every time the same problem. I can guarantee that hundreds of you, if not thousands and maybe even tens of thousands of you who may or may not watch this video will benefit from making this adjustment. If this issue that I'm gonna dive in today is something that you are in the habit of doing, making the adjustment is going to primarily add power. So you're gonna be able to just throw farther and harder. Um, however, power and accuracy go hand in hand. When your form is good, it's gonna help you to be consistent, hit lines, and throw farther all at once. Thanks again to all of you for joining me. I hope you enjoy watching, and I hope you learn something. With that being said, let's get started. All right, so here it is, the thing that I see everyone doing wrong. I've set us up a nice little tee pad here so you guys can kind of orient, kind of like what's forward, what's left, what's right, and uh, it, it has everything to do with the way my feet are oriented in relation to where the tee pad is pointing, which usually is right where the target is. So what I want you all to really focus in on is my plant foot. I'll demonstrate how to do it wrong, and then I'll demonstrate how to fix it. What I see 95% of disc golfers who can't throw over 300 feet doing is this right here. Now notice, from your angle, you can't, there's, there's no window. That'll make sense in a moment. I'll explain what I mean by a window, but my feet are pretty much pointed right at my target. Draw a line from my back foot to my front foot and to infinity and beyond, there's no window. Anyway, so now I'll show you how to do it the correct way. I'm gonna start more to the right this time because even though I'm throwing straight from, you know, straight through the line of this imaginary tee pad, I'm gonna start over here. I want my feet to end up a little more like this. And this is what I mean by the window. From your angle, you can see kind of the grass out in front of my legs. So you want some space between your legs from the perspective of viewing directly behind as opposed to here where you're just seeing the back leg and you can't really, there's no, the window, you'd have to stand over to the side to see through it. So this is the window that I'm talking about. So you want your feet to end up generally like this. The more harsh that angle is, the more power you're probably getting or going for. When people use the term opening up your hips, this is what they're talking about. It's all fine and dandy if somebody wants to say, oh, well, you're opening up your hips, but how do you fix it? Like, do you just kind of like twist your hip? No, it's not about your hips. It's about where your feet are landing, which then translates into making better use out of your hips. This is why you see pros who are really good start a little bit off to the right side of the tee pad when they're throwing a straight shot. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try to put this theory to the test. I've got two of the exact same disc here. They're brand new J's, not brand new. I've thrown each one 20 times probably. Uh, I'm gonna throw with bad form. I'm gonna throw with good form. And uh, I swear to you all, I will make an oath here that I will genuinely try to throw as far as I can with bad form. I won't just throw it softer to prove a point. I'm just gonna do my best not to hurt myself though. So the first one I'm gonna run in a straight line and try to plant straight. Yeah, nice. All right, now I'm gonna throw with my normal form. See if I can get one out there. Nice, got that one fly pretty, pretty nice. 
Now, obviously the second one went significantly farther, but just to put some exact specific numbers to this whole thing, I'm going to be using the Revasri range finder. So shout out to Revasri. Uh, this is what I believe to be the best range finder on the disc golf market. It's very accurate and it's got a setting that will tell you elevation, not just tell you the elevation, but will estimate, okay, since this is a 300 foot hole that plays 20 feet uphill, it plays like 360, that kind of thing. So it'll, it'll give you that guess, um, which is a really cool feature. What I most like about it though, is that it's very precise. It's very accurate. Uh, it doesn't really vary when you shoot the same object three times, it gives you the same number and even down to like the decimal. So it's very specific, very precise, very accurate. Go check out Ravasri range finders, get yourself one, you will not be disappointed. All right, so using the Ravasri, I measured the first one at 248 feet. I measured the second at 379 feet. So over a 30, somewhere in the neighborhood of a 35% increase. Although my backhand form isn't perfect, it's very solid to the point where I can throw over 500 feet with a distance driver. The point I'm making is even if you do all the other parts of a backhand throw really well, if you're missing this part, you're missing out on all kinds of distance. I used mid ranges in this example today. I can guarantee you if I had used a distance driver, there would be an even greater difference. Before I let you go, the last thing I'll throw in here is that when you plant, not only do you want it at that position that I was talking about earlier, you also want your foot at a 90 degree angle against your aiming point. I will even recommend that your toe is slightly pointed away, slightly closed off to that target. This will ensure that your hips are getting plenty of use and, and that the power that your lower body has available is translating more into the disc. So again, I hope you all enjoyed watching. I hope many of you learned something. Go out and film yourself from behind and watch that footwork and see if this is something that you're doing wrong. If it is, you're about to unlock a whole lot more distance to your backhand drives.